Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today. We're here at DNR Sports in Kalamazoo, Michigan. We're going to pick up the brand new Tractor 195 TXW uh, Pro Team Tournament Edition boat. We're going to head on into the store, we'll go meet our salesman, go check out the boat, sign the papers, and probably won't head to the lake because it's 33 degrees and snowing, but you know, we're going to do what we can. So come on in, let's go check it out, let's go get the new boat. Have you guys run it at all? Oh yeah, yeah we always do. Yep. We, um, so we've got our test tanks over the service, so when we when we prep them, um, we drop them in there, we hook up the laptop, and we run them. We run them probably 10, 15 minutes. We go through kind of a whole process that Richard wants us to go through on the new engines, uh, make sure everything looks good, um, and then uh, we put uh, we do put 12 gallons of gas in there too, so we've got something to get started. 12 gallons. Is yep. that is that uh, a zero ethanol or? It's um, no, it's your it's standard right, pump gas, right, but we put we put uh, Startron in it. So Startron is a treat like a fuel treatment. So it does have a fuel treatment in there. Yep. Okay. Yep. So you can run. These are designed to run on your normal 87 octane gas. Um, if you are going to fill the tank, it's going to take a while to run through it. Though it's a good idea to uh, treat it. So either a Stabil, Startron's good. Mercury makes their own fuel treatment. Um, you're going to want to run one of them in there all the time. Uh, I would do it all the time. Okay. Yeah. Because this tank's a big tank. I mean, if, it, if you fill that, it's going to take you a while to run through it. So if that gas sits in there for a month or two, it can go bad pretty quick. I won't Especially with temperature swings and everything like that. <laughs> so. Hopefully not. Hopefully you're using it. Yeah. yeah. You got your fuel tank, your batteries, on-off switch. So that on-off switch uh, we put in there, that's going to basically turn the power off to any of, your, any of your accessories except for your engine. So... You can still start your engine even if that's off, but you won't be able to turn this on, you won't be able to run anything else. So it's a good kill switch if you are putting the boat away in the winter time, if you're putting it away and you're not going to use it for a couple weeks, whatever it might be, you kill that switch, nothing's going to be able to draw any power, nothing's going to, you're not going to be able to leave a switch on or anything. So save your batteries. So um, we wire those a lot. That's the, the red switch. That's the red switch. Yep, you just turn it straight up, it'll shut it off. So like right now, things are on, but if you flip that switch up, you can't even honk the horn, you can't do anything else. Okay. So that's a nice feature. We, we, some of the fiberglass boats come standard with them, but we put them in a lot of boats, like, like yours, because it's good to have. You're not, you can't leave anything on that accident to kill your batteries. So, okay. Some guys will do it every time when they leave the lake, they'll just kill that. That way you know you're not leaving a pump on, you're, you, know, you won't burn up a pump, you won't leave your graph on or something like that and kill your batteries. So. Looking down underneath here. Okay. So that's your hummingbird transducer, so that's the side imaging. Yeah. Um, that's going to. It's going to do everything for your, your console craft. All right. And since they're wired together, um, you can technically read from that transducer even on your front one. So you can run, you can, yeah, because you can of the view, link. because of the link, you can view either one. So, like if you want to see your side imaging while you're fishing up on the front deck, you can pull it up on that front graph. I'm going to charge it on the user's actually monitor in between your center seat here, mm -hmm. uh, but your plug, your remote plug is right off the back. So there's a plug. Oh, I see out, it. So you can just run your extension plug to it. Okay. Plug that in. It's going to charge all your batteries up. Um, I'll show you here, too. The actual charging unit is right here under your seat. Mm -hmm. So when you have your charger plugged in, you can you're, you're going to have um, you're going to have your little status lights in there that are going to turn on as it's charging to tell you where the charge level is. Okay. So if you want to check and see if they're fully charged, you can open that up when it's plugged in. It'll show you. They'll be all the way lit up green. Uh, it'll tell you they're fully charged. It'll also tell you if there's some sort of a connection issue. But again, that charger. Uh, what's nice on those two is you, you're not going to hurt anything by leaving it plugged in. Uh, you might have talked about this before. But when you when you plug that charger in. Um, it's going to get all your batteries up to a full charge, and when each bank gets to a full charge, it then switch, switches over to a trickle charge, so it'll just keep them maintained. Right. So you could leave it plugged in for days on end, it's not going to hurt anything. To okay. do. You can't harm your batteries or overcharge your batteries by doing that. So engine brake in. First two hours of operation, you can run it uh, up to 4,500 RPM, or approximately three-quarter throttle, varied throttle settings during that time, um, and you can run and then do full throttle approximately one minute every 10 minutes. So that's for the first two hours. Um, oh, so beyond 4,500? Yeah, so you yep, keep it under 4,500, but then you can run one minute at a time, full throttle. Just don't go any longer than one minute at a time. The best already, way to I'm do already it, scared of going that fast. <laughs> <laughs> the best way to do it um, is if you have time, go out and kill a couple hours and do it. Cruise around. I know it's kind of boring, but it also gives you a time, give you time play, to learn how to use my draft. Play with your draft while you're doing it. Set up your settings how you like, that kind of stuff. Okay. Once you get the first two hours done, 
Next eight hours, uh, you can run it however you want to run it. Just don't do wide open throttle for more than five minutes straight. Okay. It doesn't sound like you're probably doing that. So. Probably not. Um, so that's that's an important part of it. Um, I get this question a lot. You don't have to do an oil change or anything like that right after break-in. You're fine to keep running it. Um, oil changes on these, they recommend end of every season or every 100 hours of run time on the engine. Okay. But you'll be able to see it on your vessel too. So you'll be able to tell where you're at for uh, maintenance purposes. Most people in Michigan usually don't put 100 hours of run time, so usually it's end of every season before you put it away in the winter time. Do the oil, lower unit, gear lube as well. Get that done before winter time. Um, I'll do the best I can to get 100 hours on. <laughs> I bet you will. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a lot of runtime. I mean, a lot. Of, and you know the way our lakes are here; they're not that big. So you know, most people that run, you might get 100 hours on your trolling motor, but not right. on this. So <laughs> that's usually how it goes. Uh, but you'll be able to track it though, because you got that vessel. So you'll be able to see on your phone. You can pull it up, you know, periodically and say, hey, "Where's my hours? Where am I at?" Okay. Um, and uh, be able to tell them exactly where you're at. Okay. Now, do you, do you plan to do maintenance like oil changes on your own, or bring it? I will somewhere. probably do it on my own. Okay. There it is. And there's, well, it, it does walk you through it in the book. There's some really good videos Mercury puts online, too, to show you how to do it. Um, as far as oil changes, it's just like changing the oil on the car. So I don't get I don't get one free service with a million dollar boat? <laughs> no, we don't do that. Oil filter on this one. So it's on this side. Holy cow, I bought an engine there. <laughs> yep. So this side over here, got your dipstick, your oil filter, oil fill is up on the front, the yellow cap up here on the front. So essentially changing the oil, I'm sure you've done it in a car or truck before, it's the same way. Down here's your oil drain. Now you don't fully remove that plug though. That plug you only do, I think it's two and a half turns, um, okay. and it comes out, drains out of the middle. So you want to turn the motor down, um, obviously put like a drain pan underneath, drain the old oil. Change the filter, new filter, new oil. That's it, it's pretty easy. How often? Uh, end of every season or every 100 hours, whatever's first. Okay. Yeah. Um, same with like the lower unit, they recommend end of every season before winter. Um, always a good idea too when you do the lower unit, um, if you're gonna do it yourself. Always a good idea, make sure just really keep an eye on it and if it looks milky at all, it looks like there's water in there. Um, so there's something to keep an eye on. Big thing with that is, I've seen it even on tricky new boats where somebody runs over some braided fishing line or whatever and it gets caught up in the prop seal, um, you can damage the seal, get water in there. You're gonna have issues if that happens. Or you can have issues. You want, that's why you wanna get out before winter time. You know what happens if it freezes, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, and so this is a four cylinder? Yeah, these are four. I think they're, I don't remember how many new engine it is, but it is a four. Um, so they, uh, the other, as far as other maintenance goes, there is a good maintenance schedule in the book here. Yeah. 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 So right here, it kind of gives you, this gives you a quick run through. So as I mentioned, every 100 hours or once yearly, engine oil and filter, gear case lube. Uh, they say to inspect your spark plugs, uh, all that stuff. Anodes are down here. So these are your anodes. These are Technically supposed to be replaced, uh, well, once they either show like signs of serious wear or corrosion. Um, they say the same inspect them every 100 hours. Mm -hmm. Just something to keep an eye on. Yeah. And, and inspect spark plugs. I don't know how many people actually inspect their spark plugs every season. I will. <laughs> Not a terrible idea, but I'm going to have a friend mechanic. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Very good. Yep. Um, and then every 300 hours uh, or three years of use, Testing drive belt, spark plugs, water pump and power. They recommend changing. So that's every three years. Or three hours. Drive belts up on top under the cover? Yes. Yep. And then uh, obviously spark plugs are over on this side. I think on this one, come on, don't quote me on this. I, I don't know if you have to pop off the manifold or if you can get to them. I've never done them on a 150 myself, but I've done them on my 60 horse, so that, those ones are pretty easy. Um, and then impeller, you got to drop the motor unit to get the impeller off of there. Um, have you ever you've done that on a motor before? I haven't, but okay. a friend of mine has. So. They're not, I mean, on this motor, it's the same process as it is even on a, you know, 15 horse. It's the same, you've got to drop the lower unit down. Um, you're going to have like the, the drive shaft and everything come out of there. Um, and the impeller is basically connected right there. So. Okay. 
Once again, if it's something you plan to do yourself, there's tons of really good videos out there on showing you how to do it. So um, YouTube's a great resource for stuff like that. As far as basic operation here, uh, so you got your trim, um, forward, neutral, reverse, probably just like any other boat you've been in. Um, if you ever, if you want to um, rev it up, raise your RPMs, but not put it in gear. If you push that button in, it's gonna, it's just gonna activate the throttle cable, not the shift cable. So you can kind of rev it up a little bit if you want to warm it up or if you're just test running it at all and then you bump back into neutral to pop out and then you can put it in gear. Okay. One quick note, I've been asked this before, I've gotten calls from people saying their boat won't, boat won't start. Always check that if your boat won't start. First thing to check, I've had it happen in the morning. Kill switch? Moving. Yep, it gets bumped on accident, it gets flipped down a little bit and it won't start. So, okay. yep. Had that happen way too much. You call it, is my boat starting? So did you check your kill switch? No. As far as your controls here, obviously you got your bilge pump. So bilge pump, you can with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pretty straightforward. If you're out in the rain, you're getting a lot of water in the boat or anything. Uh, navigation lights, the rear one plugs in right there, like the black cap. Front yeah. one plugs in, right in the middle there's this black uh, there's a little cap on this little black Tyler, where do they store these? Uh, the tall one is in your rod locker up here. The short one, they actually put a little clip holder right up here. Oh, I see. It's underneath. Okay. Yep. So that one plugs in right here. Very it's directional, so there's a little nub that goes in there. Mm -hmm. So can't really, can't really screw it up. Pretty easy. Wonderful. And then your switch, you've got navigation and you've got anchor. So if you want, if technically if you're not moving and you're just sitting still out there in the lake at night, all you legally need on is your anchor. Like so if you flip it down, mm -hmm. it puts that one on. Okay. Um, flip it up, it's going to put both. Uh, Let's see, obviously on this side you got your horn. This boat has live roll lights, kind of cool. Got little LEDs in here. If you flip that up, you got LEDs on each side. So if they're out at night, lights up the live roll. Kind of cool. Definitely. Uh, as far as the operation for your live well, uh, there's a plug. You see in here there's a plug that goes right in the middle down there at the bottom. That's one of your packets over here. Okay. Um, it threads in the bottom. So always want that and obviously if you're going to use your live well, make sure that's in there, otherwise it won't fill. Um, if you don't have it in there and you go on the water, you might naturally get a little bit of water that'll come up the plumbing there. So don't freak out if you see like three, four inches of water in there. If you don't have to plug in, it's natural, it's going to happen. Um, I usually tell people just put it in even if you're not going to use your live well, that way it's, there's not water getting up in your, in your live well. Um, now you've got a couple couple ways to run it here. Top one, like if you say you get out on the lake, you start catching some fish, you're going to use your live well. The fill and aerate button here, um, you can do timer or you can do continuous. Continuous is going to run on Timer is going to kick on and off every couple of minutes to kind of, you want to kind of save your battery, but it's just going to, it's going to kick on and off and um, just refresh the water every few minutes. And keep the motor from overheating. Yeah, and that too, it's not going to just run your pump for, you know, forever. Mm -hmm. um, if you leave, do leave it on continuous, there is an overflow, so it's not going to like flood into your boat or anything. It's going to overflow and drain out. Okay. Um, so that that's the fill it down here. Like if you already have it full, you can do recirculate. Basically, the main difference here: this is always going to pump new water out of the lake. Mm -hmm. This is going to keep just the water that's in the system and recirculate it and aerate it. Okay. Um, the other thing you use the bottom switch for is for pump out. So you'll see, I think it's on the other side of the line. Um, there is a red nozzle. Yeah, I can see it on the other side here. I think there's even a sticker under your lid that'll tell you. Yeah, yeah, sticker right there to tell you. So to pump out, that red nozzle pushes in and pulls out. Okay. Normal operation recirculate, you want it pushed in. Okay. If you pull it out and then you flip this bottom switch, that'll do your pump out. So what that's gonna do is down where the little mesh drain is, it's gonna it's gonna pump your water out of your live well. From the bottom. Yep, from the bottom. Okay. So it'll if you're out in the lake and you want to empty it, pull that out, flip this switch down to continuous, the bottom switch, mm -hmm. right where it says pump out, and it'll pump that out for you. Drain your live well. Neat. So you still technically in Michigan, you still have to 
pull your plug though when you leave the lake. You can't leave your plug in, you can't leave your drain plug in anymore either. That's a law in Michigan. So I haven't heard anybody get the ticket yet for it, but I don't want you to be the first one. So. Why, why would someone not pull their drain plug on their boat? Okay. Keep, some people don't. <laughs> can you flip the lights back on? Yeah. 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 Oh, that is neat. Yeah, pull out of these. All right. That is cool. Yeah. And then this just pulls in and yeah, out. Yeah, you can take that in and out if you're not going to use it or if you are, you know. Don't you want to have a fishing competition so you can fill their side quicker and leave it in there? If you catch anything real big, you're going to have to probably take it out. <laughs> the live well doesn't lock. No. Okay. They do okay. um, They do lock for like up front for all your gear and everything will lock, but back the live well doesn't lock. So somebody could steal you. <laughs> I was more thinking about going down the highway if they uh, get a little air under them somehow. And oh, they come well, up. I know if they're, if they're closed all the way, they shouldn't. I agree. Yeah. So you have two trolling batteries, one, or you, one for your crank battery. And they are group 27s, 750 crank amps each. And this is a 30 gallon fuel tank, right? Uh, you can see right there. Let's see from here, but I believe this capacity. Yep, 30, 30, gallons. 30 gallons. When you flip it up, that'll kill your power up here. So if you have that up, I won't be able to see. I can't honk the horn, I can't turn okay. any of that stuff on. Well, that's slick. Yeah, that's something we have. We, it, it's nice to have. I mean, I think they should put it standard on about all these boats, but yeah, we, we put that on. Um, so, yeah, that way, you know, you can't leave your live well lights on, you can't leave your, your hummingbird on, you can't do any of that. What is this for here, Tyler? What's that? This, that's just an access panel. Yeah, it screws loose so that um, gives you better access down to your. I believe the bilge pump is straight down there. I can't quite see where I'm looking. <laughs> Okay. Kind of easier access because otherwise you got to try to reach around the fuel tank to get down in there. Yep. So it just gives you access. Bilge access. pump and the aerator. Yep. They're both there. Yep. Yep. If you okay. Ever have to do anything with those. So. What's the big white wire here for? That's your power up. That's clean power up to your grass. Okay. So, yep. I can't believe how much bigger this boat is than my other one. <laughs> it's like twice the boat. Yeah. Two feet longer, but so much wider. Yeah, the width is really totally big on these. Yeah. That square footage of usable space. The width, is, to me, the width is like this. I'm not going to keep these just so we don't need any time. I don't like leaving them in there, you know, driving down the road. I don't want you to lose your no. key or anything. So this is just cool. storage. Storage on either side, yep. Get some boxes in here. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you got a ton of storage in that middle, the middle two of these. Okay. You got a ton of them in there. Um, but these are nice too for yeah smaller like Plano boxes or even if you want to use one to put some tools that kind of stuff in. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so we went over the controls. Um, up front you do have basically one switch, pretty simple for your big motor to trim it up and down. So if you're sitting up here fishing and you're getting in shallow water with your trolling motor, you can trim your motor up and down right here. Okay. And then this is your trolling motor power. So if you ever like, if you want to unplug it for whatever reason, you can unplug it right there. Hey, you got his glove box, cup holder, cell phone holder. However, where they put their cell phone holder makes you really yeah, yeah, to the water. <laughs> I, I I always thought that was really cool. Yeah, that yeah. 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 place to keep your iPilot remote and other accessories. Got like it. For sure. <laughs> Stored below too, or? Uh, there's not below other than they, they got the little mm -hmm. things to put your butts of your rods. So if you want to mm -hmm. put some rods along here, um, some people put them there. Uh, usually on these boats, like you know, if you had somebody fishing back that brought their own rods, you can stash them here. But a lot of people use the straps up here to lay them down, just strap them down so they don't fly out. Or you obviously have your you have your compartments as well. So here's your navigation light, by the way. Okay. But you got your compartments too with all the rod organizer and everything like that. So. Lots of room to keep all your gear in there. Twelve rods, depending on the size of the reels. Yes. Yep. If if you're doing like all spinning rods, you won't be able to fit quite as many because they're they, obviously the way they stick off the reel there. Right. Um, and then yeah, lots of these are all lockable as well. Yes. Okay. Yep. All you so if you have your rods, your gear here, it's easy to go and quick lock them all. That way, if the boat's parked anywhere with a hydro shock. Mm -hmm. 
Those dividers I know are removable. There's a lot of room up there. <laughs> yeah. Well, you gotta think you're gonna have life vests which take up a lot of room. Yep. I'm sure you're gonna have you know a bunch of tackle. You're gonna probably have rain gear, mm -hmm. all that type of stuff. Where you need you need a lot of room. They make best use of their of the boat up here for storage. That's for sure. More cup holders. <laughs> Your secret cup holders in there. I guess. <laughs> It's where we keep the secret beverages. All right. Uh, and then you got a little tool organizer holder in there too. Oh, there's drain lines coming off of the cup holders. That's clever. And then right under you, there's the. Uh, we're going to be used by the cooler compartment also. And there is a drain plug that goes in the bottom of there. I have that here in one of your tanks. So there's a hole in the bottom of each of these cup holders. And there's, rub did you see the hose down there? There's actually hose drain lines connected to the bottom of them. Does this light come on with the nav lights then too? Nope, that's a push. Light? Oh. Yep, push light. Yeah, that's convenient. Uh, yep, if you're sitting, yeah, if you're, you know, um, it kind of lights up your cockpit area right here and everything. Um, that cooler in the middle down there, this is the little plug here. That's what this one goes to. Okay. That goes to the cooler. This is for your live well. Okay. So the bigger one, that's the one that screws down the bottom of your live well. And then you probably know what that one's for. I but do. Don't forget that one. Is there room? <laughs> yeah, definitely not. Does is there room to put that from the inside, or does that go on uh, the outside? You on might be able to reach in from here and do it, but it's not going to be easy. Okay. Typically outside, you just push it in, screw it tight. Um, on the old tracker, I put it on from the inside. Right. Some boats, it's easy to do. This one, you probably could. It went through this access panel, but it's going to be a little. You're going to be reaching way down in there. It's going to be easier to do it from the outside. You betcha. Everything on the boat. This is the boat itself. You've got your charger. There's a little manual for the onboard charger. There is, oh, what is this one for? I was talking about the tilt and trim on the motor. Not something you're probably ever gonna use, but I'm gonna leave it all in there. <laughs> hydraulic steering, the whole manual on the hydraulic steering system, this, the um, base star. Oh, Mercury propeller, charger. The Fulton trailer jack, there's a whole manual for it. Okay. There's a lot. So, lots of good reading material in there. Um, everything for your graphs, your trolling motor, everything is in this packet, and then everything for the Mercury is in this packet. So, okay. Lots of reading material. Before we get started, anything with the electronics, do you have questions at all? Anything boat related you want to talk about before we? dive into that side of things? I don't think so. Is it better if I get out of the boat? Yeah, no, you're good. Okay. So this is, well, just for the heading sensor assembly for the trolling motor. This also has some part, different things with the trolling motor as far as how to use the remote and whatnot. The one thing I really like that they give you is this page <coughs> right here because this is kind of a, a laminated one, so even if you keep it in the boat and it happens to get wet, it's not gonna get ruined. This is a really good quick reference guide on how to use the remote and the main features on the trolling motor. Um, so it kind of walks you through each button, and then from there, you know, what each one does, different features you can use right on the remote. Um, even shows you, so down here, it'll have, it'll have two things, it'll have your this is a big one that uh, this one has that some of them don't, is it shows your remote battery status, but it also shows your trolling batteries themselves. Okay. So it'll keep a track like approximately at where you're at as far as uh, how much battery life you have left. Oh, fantastic. So that's pretty nice. Um, now as far as basic operation, like just if you're just gonna go drive the boat around, you wanna use the remote, the middle buttons here, this is on and off, speed up, speed down, left, right. Simple as that. Spot lock, that's a big one. Just tap that button. Yep, okay. that's your. Yep, that's gonna hold you in place. 
Um, when you start getting into some of the more advanced features, such as, uh, let's say you want to save a course or go to waypoints, that kind of thing, um, you can do like the waypoints right off of your hummingbird on this, being that they're all linked. You can pull up a waypoint and say, I want to go to that, and it'll take you right to it, but you can also do it on here. Um, once you hit the home button, it's all going to be on the digital screen. Okay. Which there's not a whole lot I can really do with it, being that we're not on the water. Right. Um, that's why I always say keep this in the boat, because mm -hmm. this is a really good way to <laughs> play around with it and learn how to do it. Okay. Um, a couple things you can do, a couple things that I like to use myself, the autopilot is one. Um, I think we've talked about that, but the autopilot is the one where if you are cruising a drop off and you want to stay on a good line, you can hit that button and it's going to keep you right on track. Even if the wind starts blowing you off course, the trolling motor will correct to keep you going in a straight line. Okay. Um, so that's a really nice one. Um, the other one that's kind of cool too, if you're doing any trolling, is the cruise control. So cruise control, you can set it to an exact speed and hit that cruise control button. And if the wind is blowing one way or the other, they're either trying to speed you up or slow you down, the motor will compensate on its own to keep you at your exact GPS speed. That's brilliant. So it's really, yeah, that one's really nice. Like I know sometimes yeah. trolling speed is a key. So um, that's a really cool one. I, I use the, the autopilot and that a fair amount. I probably use Spotlock more than anything, but um, those two I use a lot on mine. Um, I don't personally get into like the whole saving courses and that type of thing, but I also don't, I don't troll a ton, so I just, I don't use that all the time, but there's a lot of good stuff you can do with that too. Um, so this will walk you through like the cruise control, the autopilot, um, spot lock. So one other cool feature too with spot lock is spot lock jog. Are you familiar with that at all? Uh, you told me you could move over yeah. like five feet or 20 feet yep. or whatever. Yep. So when you're, once you spot lock somewhere, um, right, uh, where is it? right here. So you use basically these four buttons. Okay. So once you're spot locked, if you hit like the up button, it's going to move you five feet forward. If you hit down five feet backwards, if you hit left or right, it's going to move you five feet and then it's going to re-spot lock you in that place. Okay. So like if you're, you're fishing, you've got a good weed edge or something like that. And you got the boat spot locked and you say, oh, I just want to keep moving down the line. You can just hit the arrows, bump you five feet at a time, and it's gonna keep you spot locked each time once you stop. So you could like work your way down a brake line or down a weed bed and, and just fish the whole thing really easily with this. Wow, that's clever. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. These things, there's so, there's so much technology with these. <laughs> It'll take you a while to learn it all, and you might not even use it all. There might be features that, there probably will be features you'll never even really use. That's the way it is with mine. I, I use, there's a handful of things I really like, but there's a lot of stuff on there I don't even really mess with. Okay. So, this will show you too about marking waypoints on here, um, you know how to mark them and then uh, how to go to the saved waypoints. Um, now with the saved waypoints, most people with the iPilot link like to do it right off of their Hummingbird. So you can pull up the map and see each one on there and say, mm -hmm. I wanna go to that one. Um, and it'll take your control motor, will take you right to it. So, okay. um, most people are gonna do that more on their graph than they are on the remote, but you can do it on the remote. Indeed. Um, same, okay, over here recording tracks, so the eye track, that's like if you have a lake and you're going to go out and troll the circle and save it. Um, that shows you how to do all of that. A lot of it's pretty straightforward. Um, let's see. Go to save. So yeah, once you do, you record it, save it, you can go to the save tracks. Um, you can, I believe on this you can name them too. So if you have like a certain lake or a certain track you like, you can name it and go back and pull it up. Um, or you can even do it like from your hummingbird. Um, you can mark like waypoints and say, I want to follow those waypoints. Okay. F create like your own course uh, before you record it itself. Because a lot of these you got to record it first. So you got to go out and do it and mm -hmm. then you can save it and then go back to the save next time you go to the lake. Okay. So, um, so this, yeah, this, this page, I would keep this in your boat at all times. Like I said, it's kind of like the laminated mm -hmm. stuff, so you won't, you won't ruin it. Um, but it walks you through all your basic features and everything. So wonderful. this will show your exact speed on it too, which your graphs will as well with the GPS, but it'll show your speed, uh, which is kind of nice. If you're trolling, if you can get on a good bite, you can recreate what you're doing by watching that speed. Um, um, let's see, what else do we have here? I said there's so much on these things you can do. Oh, it shows like your heading, like your, basically like your bearing and heading and all that, what degree you're going, all that type of stuff, kind of like compass features. Okay. It gives you all kinds of good stuff on here. This will be fun to learn. There's a lot to learn. On. <laughs> I mean, there's, there really, there's still a lot. Oh, there's temperature and depth too. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, that'll show, like you can see here, you have temperature, your bearing, your depth. Um, 
I believe to get like your depth and temperature that you have to have your, pretty sure you have to have your home on as well. Mm -hmm. see that, but I'm sure you probably would anyway. Yes, so you betcha. Yeah, yeah based on communication with the hummingbird. So yeah, both of those are okay. all based off of that. But even without your hummingbird, it'll still show you your speed and your bearing and that kind of thing. So, okay. Because it's that GPS connected right to that trolling motor, so it knows your exact speed over ground. So. Nice. Um, let's go up to the front here so we can show you some things. Oh, this is your charger for this. Got a little plug. It's the USB charger. So this is rechargeable. Okay. It will tell you right on the screen your battery life. So once you see it getting low, if you're out in the water, you can plug it into your dash there, charge it. Or you know, take it home, plug it in overnight if you need to before you go out. That's clever. Um, up here on the trolling motor itself. So as far as deploying it, make sure this strap's off. I'm not gonna be able to really do it with the trailer step on there. But basically it's easy to stand up, pull the cable, and flip. And it's got the gas shock, so it helps take some of the weight off of it. Okay. And you're just gonna flip it right down and it'll lock into place once it's all the way down. Pulling it up is the same way. Grab onto this cord, give it a pull, pull it up, it'll flip right up, land back down in place. I would always make sure this is on there. I personally like to put it on even running across the lake just to be safe, um, but definitely when you're like going down the road, <laughs> make sure that's on there. You don't want this thing falling into, into the water or anything. Definitely not. Um, you can adjust the height on it here, this collar. Okay. Um, so if you're getting in like really shallow water, you can. Um, loosen this, the, this shaft will slide up, lower this down and then retighten it so it'll keep it at the right depth. Uh, your foot pedal here. So the switch right here is going to be your on off. And then your controls on here, you've got a couple of options. So as it sits right now, it's only going to run, and I'm not going to do it since it's sitting up, but mm -hmm. it's only going to run when you push this button down. Okay. Um, over here it controls your speed. So off, and then it's a smooth dial, so you can dial it right into what speed you want from here. Um, if you want it to run continuously, and you're not, and you're using your foot pedal, not your remote, if you hit the button right here, it's going to run nonstop. Okay. And when this is on, this little light right here will light up. Okay. When you're spot locked, you hit the button here, it'll spot lock you. The little uh, right next to the air or the anchor will light up. Okay. And then the N is your heading lock, so your autopilot. Okay. I call yep. it heading lock autopilot. So if you have that on, this will light up. So it kind of tells you what's going on. Um, Wonderful. So pretty straightforward on the rim, on the foot pedal for the most part. You can't obviously you can't do a lot of the iPilot features. You can't do off of the foot pedal. You can do the spot lock, the autopilot. Um, but for any of the advanced features, you have to use your remote. Okay. And then just on off. Um, once again, if you were if you wanted to be safe, make sure nothing's drawing power or anything like that. You can just unplug it here too. And it's okay. just going to disconnect power. Yeah. Um, the hummingbirds, one nice thing is you have the two of the same hummingbirds. So as far as learning them, if you learn one of them, you're going to already kind of know how to use the other. So, um, I'll show you just a couple couple things that I like to use on mine because I have a helix as well. So you can turn it a little more if you want. To. Sure. That's the beauty of the ram. Huh? <laughs> turn it any way you want. I might not get a GPS signal in this tin building, so it might not pull anything up there. But so this is just telling you don't rely on this for navigation. Basically, if you hit something, it's not hummingbird's fault that you're hitting something. So. This is your mapping page, but right now it's not going to load because it does it does take a minute or two to load once you power it up. But I'm also in a tin building, so I doubt I'm going to get a GPS fix. Um, as far as views, this is one thing that <laughs> it's a real simple thing, but it took me a little bit to learn on mine. If you go to views, so these are all different views where they do like split screen, where they'll show, say, like just sonar or you can do your 2D and down imaging. You can do your chart view, which is your mapping. You can do instrument view. So if you see visible and hidden, mm -hmm. what I what you'll find, and it might take you a little bit using it, you'll you'll go through it and you'll realize, okay, I don't need the self test screen visible at all times. So have that hidden. You might find that you really like, say, the chart sonar view. Right now it's visible. Um, 
So you can change all these, and that way when you're on your main screen here and you hit the view button and it's cycling through every view, you might narrow that down to three, four screens. So it's not gonna go through some of these screens that you're never gonna use. So I found that with mine, it took me a while to change it because I just didn't even really play around with it. But I was like, every time I want to change views, I would have to go through 10 screens to find the screen I want. Okay. But you, I have it narrowed down now, I only use like three screens. So I changed all the settings, so I only have three screens to cycle through. So, so all the ones that are hidden don't pop up when you it, it, so scroll yep, through those. Yep, if it shows hidden on here, they're mm -hmm. not gonna show, but right now you have, I mean, there's a lot on here. And you're yeah. gonna probably look at it and say, I don't need this one, I don't, you know, I do want this one. Um, like I narrowed mine down, I have my, my map, I have my map, sonar split, I have my side imaging, and I think, oh, I think I have four, because I have my side imaging and my, and my regular sonar. I have those like the only ones I ever use. So all these, all these other ones like, Diagnostic view, I don't see why you really need that on there every time. Mm -hmm. Self-test, I didn't need that on there. Accessory test, you don't need, really need that. So you can turn all that stuff off. Okay. Um, so it might take you a little time to play with it and learn um, to see, you know, to see which, uh, which ones you like the best. Uh, so network, so this is a big one, share waypoints on. We always turn that on. What that means is since they're networked, if you mark a waypoint here, it's going to share them. It's going to be on both graphs. Or if you mark one there, it's going to be on both graphs. So. Great idea. So I would just, I wouldn't even touch it, leave it on. You're going to want it on. So um, accessories. So this gives you like your phone Bluetooth. You can, you can, you'll be able to set your phone. Um, so technically you could use your phone in place of that remote on the trolling motor to like control it. I don't know why you wouldn't just use the remote, but right. you can. Okay. Um, there's also options like if you ever added or if you ever wanted to do like the Minn Kota Talons or Raptors or Cannon Downriggers, um, all that type of stuff, you can actually program to Bluetooth so this will like communicate with them. So I know with the Talons, we do it a lot on them where we'll put the Talons and you can actually control the Talons on your graph. You can pull up, pull them up and put them up and down just on your, on your Hummingbird. No kidding. Which once again, usually you have the remote, you have everything else, but you can do it. Okay. So if you ever add any of that stuff, that's something you can do. Um, there's a ton of different settings on these as far as like screen colors, shallow water highlight, which like right now it looks like is on. So it'll show like on your map, it'll like color it differently for different depth contours. So oh, okay. um, you can play with all that though if you don't like it or if you want to change it. There's, there's tons of options with these. Mm -hmm. uh, map source. So like here's like your waypoint stuff, which we don't have any yet and I don't have GPS. Mm -hmm. um, so one thing I'll show, I don't know if it'll let me, but that's the big digit view, the one that has the huge number. <laughs> so on the map page, let's see if it's loading anything yet. Oh, there it has. Yeah, see it won't let me. So if you marked a waypoint, like if we were on a lake, you marked that waypoint, say you go across the lake, you can pull up your map, scroll to that waypoint, and you hit it, when you get to the waypoint, you hit the right button and it'll ask you, it'll say go to. And if you hit go to on its own, it's gonna take you right back to that waypoint. You don't have to touch anything else. So I can't do, I can't show you how to do it because I don't have GPS, but um, really cool feature with these. Yeah. And marking waypoints is as simple as just hitting mark. That's all you gotta hit. Okay. The mark button, it won't let me, but it'll mark your spot. So if you find a, a spot in the middle of the lake where there's a ton of fish, you find uh, you know a rock pile or something that you wanna save, just that mark button, it'll, it'll mark that way. And can you that. label them? You can. So it'll automatically number them, um, but you can go back to it and change the name. Okay. Um, I think, I don't know if it'll let me since I don't have any. Oh uh, yeah, here. I think you have to actually have the waypoint in front of you, which I don't have. No, I don't want to see. Ah, here we go. So you can go here too, and you can see them all. There'll be like a list of your waypoints once you have waypoints on here. Okay. Um, I think, yeah, it will. It'll show, I believe it'll show you too. Like if you go to it, it'll show you like where it is on the lake. Mm -hmm. So you could save a bunch and then go back later when you're done fishing and pull them up and, and name them and, and go through all that. I can't say, I can only do so much when it's sitting here not on the water. Right. But um, let's see what else we got. You can save, like if there's certain screens that you like, you can save them to these little icons too. So you can say, I want my side imaging and you can hit that button and it'll, like right now it's programmed to this screen, but you can you can change those if you want. 
Um, uh, let's see what else we have. A oh, big thing is going to just be, once again, using it. I'd say the number one thing. Um, so you've got like your sensitivity. You can change sonar colors. Some people like the different options there, like a dark background instead of a light background. Mo I, I'd say most people on the sonar use the white background, but if you like the black better, you can change it. Um, oh, I'm on the wrong screen right now. So let's see, down images, I believe we can change that. Yeah, you can change, like, I know some people change this one to do, you can kind of see it. It's okay. not showing up because we're out in the water, but you can mm -hmm. like change the color spectrum if you like different different stuff. I've always kind of left mine on default, but some people it's easier on their eyes or it's easier for them to see. So something to play around with once you get it on the water, be able to see the differences and you'll probably find one that you like best. So you got a lot of stuff to play with. I guess so. <laughs> Lots of reading to do. Yeah. The other one's essentially, the, I mean, they're the same graph, so mm -hmm. um, that's a nice thing, like I said, once you play around with one, you kind of get a feel for it, what you like, screens you like, that kind of thing. Um, you can do the same on the other one. There it is. It's not like you're learning two separate units, you're learning the same thing, just um, how you plan to use it in each spot, you know. Most people use their side imaging a lot more at their console and their mapping a lot more at their console. Because when you're cruising around, you can look at the map, you can look at your side imaging and scan a nice path. And then usually when you're up here, it's more seeing what's underneath you uh, while you're fishing. So. Yeah. Uh, another nice thing with these, all your wiring is plugged in with one. So like if you're gonna pop this off the boat or anything, mm -hmm. just pull this whole plug off. Everything's wired into it. So nice. you've got your power, your sonar, and your, um, your network cable is what the three of them are. So it's kind of nice having one plug instead of having to plug three different ones in. Mm -hmm. so. That's slick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like with these, when you're putting the, well, this front one you should be okay with, but if you were putting the cover on, some guys will take them right off. Other guys will just loosen the ram out and like lay it down just so it's not gonna like sit up and maybe bounce a little bit. Mm -hmm. just lay it down like this, but you can also take it right off the boat real easily right off of this mount. So okay. it's up to you how you want to do it. And then I got the nice fancy covers too. I was thinking I probably wouldn't want to go down the road with them on there. But. It's totally, I mean, really it's up to you. If you're gonna leave this one, I would lay it down, at least lay it down flat. Um, so it doesn't potentially bounce around or anything like that. But these, these ram mounts, if you tighten them down, they're pretty strong. Um, they shouldn't bounce around or anything. I'm gonna leave that on flat for now. Okay. Um, the other one, when you're putting the cover on, you either, you, you should be able to tuck it down a little bit to put the cover on, but I would probably just take it off if it were me. That way it's just not in the way, it's not kind of pushed down. But you had a way to hold that connector to put on. Yeah, um, you could, it shouldn't bounce around. I mean, you could lay it kind of down here or even down in the front here, but um, I'm not sure if there's a good way to hold it down and secure it. Quite. I mean, you could lay it, you know, lay it down here. Once the cover's on, it shouldn't bounce out too much. But yeah. Oh, it's way up there. Okay. Your the Ethernet. Ethernet. Thing? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So that's everything. So that's another thing too. If you so that has right now your troll like the power's on the far right. Okay. Um, your trolling motor uh, and your two graphs. If you ever added. I'm sure you've probably seen like the Mega 360 or the Mega Live that Hummingbird has. Yeah. If you ever add that, like the Mega Live and Mega 360 are going to run, you got to run power to it, but they're going to plug right into this box. Okay. And when you have it plugged into that box, you can see it on either screen. So Fantastic. that links everything together. That's exciting. So you can add up to two more accessories with it. Okay. And fire extinguisher, the ore, and those things? I believe they? they're with your boxes. I'll oh. grab them, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because they, they, they had your boxes over there and they moved the boat over here this morning. They didn't bring the boxes. So I'll grab all that stuff. All right. Because um, you're going to have yeah, your fire extinguisher, fire extinguisher paddle, um, yeah, your lights are already in here. And then I've got the boxes for 